all anyway. It is wonderful to be back hosting the Twitch for you. My name is Derek Knights. I am somewhere in Colorado. And like many of you, I ceased wearing pants a long time ago. The pandemic doesn't require pants. That's not to say I don't have anything covering my butt. I do. I've got shorts on. But I have a classy shirt. And that's all you need when you're on camera. You just need a classy shirt. With all of that said, let's go with uh, the actual quiz. Let's get started with that and move on to round number one. Round one tonight is called Hail Xenu. It's called Hail Xenu because in honor of L. Ron Hubbard's birth week, answers in this round will only contain letters found in the word Dianetics. So if you can see letters in that word Dianetics, those are the only letters you'll need to put correct answers down. That's it. The answers in this round will have the same letters as found in Dianetics. So let's get started. Round one, question number one. Number one, the taxi in the Fresh Prince theme is rare due to a personalized license plate and what mirror accessory? Number one, the taxi in the Fresh, Fresh Prince theme is rare due to a personalized license plate and what mirror accessory? You're right, Julia Fig SBC. I did not use this mic last time. Last time was yet another very old 1950s electro voice broadcast model, the 630, 635. But this is one of my favorites. It's very sturdy. It's like 52 pounds of metal. And this is the original element. So this is what it sounded like when it was new in 1957. Round one, question number two. During their dizzy years at the Academy, Space Force officer trainees go by what C-word rank? Number two, during their dizzy years at the Academy, Space Force officer trainees go by what C-word rank? Round one is called Hail Xenu. Remember that your answers will only contain letters found in Dianetics. And hey, Jerry Oki, haven't seen you in a while. Of course, I haven't seen anybody in a while. I mean, I've seen a few people, but, you know, pandemic. Recently was the one-year anniversary of the last public event ever, our last Geek Bowl in Chicago. I just, that was it. <laughs> that was literally it. And then everything shut down, and it's still shut down. Number three. Round one, question number three. Suck it, Whisk. In 2006, what laundry detergent brand was declared a National Historic Chemical Landmark? I didn't know chemicals could be landmarks, but number three, Suck it, Whisk. In 2006, what laundry detergent brand was declared a National Historic Chemical Landmark? Fly Bush and Flyboy 2K1, you're both right. I could host a ton of quizzes and not use the same mic twice, and I would not wear pants for the next decade if if it were possible, and I think it's possible. I think that is my goal for the next decade. I'm not going to wear pants for the next 10 years. Round one, Hail Xenu. Here's question number four. Number four, speaking of detergent, 2001's It's Been a While was the first chart-topping hit by what new metal band that could use some OxyClean? Number four. 
Speaking of detergent, 2001, it's 2001's It's Been a While, was the first chart-topping hit by what new metal band that could use some OxyClean? <laughs> Alicia Step, uh, the track I'm playing is called Barrel Full of Sea Monkeys. It's a uh, royalty-free surf music track. There's a website that I found that was doing a month-long challenge for the bands that submit um, just to do surf music. And this one's called Barrel Full of Sea Monkeys. That's all I know about it. I don't know much else. I know it's royalty-free, so hopefully we don't get arrested. Question number five. Number five. No, not the birds. You can use a swan or a duck to do what step that aerates and removes sediment from wine. Number five. Not the birds. You can use a swan or a duck to do what step that aerates and removes sediment from wine. Round one is called Hail Xenu. Answers will contain letters found in the word Dianetics. And you, you can repeat some of them sometimes, so don't think like, oh, I, I ran out of ends. No, nah, just, just use the letters found in Dianetics to write your answers. Wherever you're writing them. If you're just writing them in the air, you know, that's cool too. Question six, round one, question six. Agent Cooper's mostly faceless secretary on Twin Peaks and the fussy server who bailed after five seasons of Cheers share what name? Number six, Agent Cooper's mostly faceless secretary on Twin Peaks. And the fussy server who bailed after five seasons of Cheers share what name? SJ Holly 11, yes, I'm pretty sure you can repeat letters. You know, if not, just you do you. You don't have to follow anybody else's rules, right? Psh, what are we playing for anyway? Besides, you can use the chat to tell me what you're drinking. I've got a tropical drink called a dark light in my cask of Amontillado mug, which is pretty cool. No Amontillado in it. A lot of bourbon in 151. Question number seven in round one, Japanese-American analogy time. Issei is to Japanese-born American immigrants as what is to their children? Number seven, Japanese-American analogy time. Issei is to Japanese-born American immigrants as what is to their children? Number one, Hail Xenu. We are at question number eight. Number eight in round one, a stuffed bear tries to steal Tom Brady's sperm in the 2015 sequel to what film? That sounds fun. Number eight, a stuffed bear tries to steal Tom Brady's sperm in the 2015 sequel to what film?
Yeah, the bonus is coming up after eight. So don't freak out. This is still just number eight. The bonus, though, is coming up right now. Here's your bonus question for round number one, sponsored by us, Geeks Who Drink, but the Zoom quizzes. So it's like Geeks Who Drink because it is, but it's also on Zoom. So you can play Geeks Who Drink on Zoom, and that's who sponsors the bonus question. Here it is. If Sambuca makes you feel like your own mouth is pooping in your own mouth, you probably just don't like the star version of what aromatic herb. Hail Xenu, title of the round. Once again, all the answers could be formed from the letters in Dianetics. And sure, repeat some letters. Who cares? Who gives a shit, right? It says, you do you. You do you. Number one, the Taxi and the Fresh Prince theme is rare due to a personalized license plate and dice in the mirror. Yo, Holmes, smell you later. Dice at number one. Number two, during their dizzy years at the Academy, Space Force officer trainees go by what C-word rank? See you next Tuesday, cadets. Cadets is the C-word in question at number two. Number two. Question number three. Suck it, whisk. In 2006, the laundry detergent brand that was declared a national historic chemical landmark. I didn't even know that could be the case, but it's tied. Tied. Don't eat it. That's tied at number three. Number four. Speaking of detergent, 2001's It's Been a While was the first chart-topping hit by Stained. You get, you get the joke there. Sure, you get jokes. Stained at number four. Number five. It's not the birds, not the actual birds. I mean, you could try, but you'd probably get pecked. You can use a swan or a duck to decant your wine. Decanting removes sediment and stuff. So you can use a swan or a duck to decant your wine. At number five. Number six. Agent Cooper's mostly faceless secretary on Twin Peaks and the fussy server who bailed after five seasons of Cheers were both called Diane. Diane at number six. Number seven, Japanese-American analogy time, Issei, is to Japanese-born American immigrants as Nisei is to their children. Nisei at number seven. And number eight, a stuffed bear tries to steal Tom Brady's sperm in the 2015 sequel to what film? No, Mr. Bear, that's just wrong. It's Ted, obviously, because in what other movie would a stuffed bear try to do something so disgusting? But Ted, Ted at number eight. Now, we get to take a look. Yeah, this was the Christopher Robin. The stuffed bear was Winnie the Pooh, and he's like, oh, bother. I've got, I, oh, that's actually Mickey Mouse. I guess I don't know how to do a uh, Winnie the Pooh impression. So it'll just be Mickey Mouse. Oh, bother. I've got to go get Tom Brady's sperm. Anyway, back to the round one bonus question. Sponsored by Geeks Who Drink Zoom Quizzes. You're playing for entries into a future Zoom quiz which, that's a valuable prize, guys. It's a very valuable prize. Here we go. Your A question was if Sambuca makes you feel like your mouth is pooping in your mouth. You probably just don't like the star version of Anis. Anis is the answer to the bonus question. Hey, it is time for round number two, and we have a special guest host for this round. So it is my great pleasure to turn things over to Nicole Holiday. I'm linguist Twitter celebrity Nicole Holiday. You know, even when you have an actual doctorate in a fancy Ivy League professorship, motherfuckers still want to talk over you. So now that Derek has graciously handed off the mic for once, let's give some women a chance to shine. Round two is called Mansplain I Feel Like a Woman. Some terrible mansplainer broke into our studio and went all, well actually, over a bunch of empowering songs by empowering women. Do like you usually do online and just try to ignore him. Give us the title and artist for each song. Now what she's really saying here, that in exchange for her income, which she herself has earned, she merely requires acknowledgement as an equal breadwinner within that relationship. Here, 
here is a resistance to exterior influence, the quote, words that would bring her down in relation to her own self-image. drawing a parallel between the hotness and the extended metaphor that runs through the entirety of the song and tying that to self-empowerment. is largely about expression, about the value of using one's voice as a determiner of reality. Because when she uses that voice, when she uses her, hold on, ah, there we go. When she uses her voice, there is power in being heard. Throughout the song, she uses sarcastic diminutives in order to take issue with the gender roles laid out for her by society and, uh, indeed, even within the band itself. intended meaning here is that women, when banding together, can accomplish great things in spite of an environment largely dominated by men. She uses the word persuasion both to mean enticement and gender, the female persuasion. You see, here she takes a stand against gender pejoratives, although it's, it's quite a relief to hear her say it's still all right, permissible to use them in jest in opposition to so-called cancel culture. Switch my wig, make them feel like the GT. message we can derive here is that I'm looking for a beat in the um, chain. I'm the one that eat you. If he ate my ass, he's a bottom. Did she say big ate my ass? ass? Big demeanor, how can make you bust before I ever meet this, you? If this it makes don't me very hang, uncomfortable. Can't you can't hurt my feelings, but I like pain. If he fucks me and ask who's is it when I ride the dick, I'm gonna spell my name. She's really saying here that in exchange for her income, which she herself has earned, she merely requires acknowledgement as an equal breadwinner within that relationship. to exterior influence the quote words that would bring her down in relation to her own self-image. drawing a parallel between the hotness and the extended metaphor that runs through the entirety of the song and tying that to self-empowerment. is largely about expression, about the value of using one's voice as a determiner of reality. Because when she uses that voice, when she uses her, hold on, ah, there we go. When she uses her voice, there is power in being heard. Throughout the song, she uses sarcastic diminutives in order to take issue with the gender roles laid out for her by society and, uh, indeed, even within the band itself.
intended meaning here is that women, when banding together, can accomplish great things in spite of an environment largely dominated by men. She uses the word persuasion both to mean enticement and gender, the female persuasion. You see, here she takes a stand against gender pejoratives. Although, it's, it's quite a relief to hear her say it's still all right, permissible to use them in jest, in opposition to so-called cancel culture. Switch my wig, make them feel like the message we can derive here is that I'm looking for a beat in the um, chain. I'm the one that eats you. If he ate my ass, he's a bottom. Did she say big ate my ass? Like big demeanor. How can make you bust before I ever meet this, you? If this it makes hang, me very you uncomfortable. Bang, you can't hurt my feelings, but I like pain. If he fucks me and ask who's is it when I ride the dick, I'ma spell my name. Let's see those answers for round two. Hit it. I'm out to give it. I'm out now, what she's really saying here. I'm that in exchange for her income, which... Yes, words can bring you now down. what she's trying to express here is a resistance to... She's on top of the world, hottest of the hottest girls... So what she's really doing here is drawing a pair... song is largely about expression, about the value of using one's voice as a... Throughout the song, she uses sarcastic diminutives in order... Now, the intended meaning here is that women, when banding together, can accomplish... Another flow, flow. Every time I hear a brother call a girl a bitch or a hoe. Try you see, here she takes a stand again. Switch my wig, make them feel like the message we can derive here is that I'm looking for a beat in the um, chain. I'm the one that eat you. If he ate my ass, he's a bottom. Did she say big ate my ass? Big demeanor, how can make you bust before I ever meet this, you? If this you makes hang, me very uncomfortable. Bang, you can't hurt my All right, I want to thank Nicole Holiday profusely for sharing some of her time and hosting that round two for us. And now we get to move on to round number three. Let's just do round, I did that, yeah. Time is linear. How about now round three? But yes, thank you very much, Nicole Holiday. Need to get her back hosting. She hosts regular Zoom quizzes, by the way. You could find her on the, find her on the website, play one of her quizzes. Need to get her hosting one of these soon. Here, round number three. Oh, why didn't I introduce myself by saying, hello, baby? Like it's because there's a big boppers mic? Sure, that would be a little bit self-serving. And, you know, maybe Chantilly Lace on a pretty face on a ponytail hanging down. Everything new is old again. That is the subject for round number three. What does that mean? I don't know. It's just a 50-50 round. Apparently, you'll catch on. That's all I know. 50-50 round, you'll get it. Here's question number one. Number one, what nation had the highest population in 1939? Was that China or just some other country? Any other country or China? There are your choices for this question. Round three, everything new is old again. It's a 50-50 round. It's a very simple 50-50 round. And Stu Kolb, uh, my recipe for the dark light is actually proprietary. I, I don't give that out in public. It's my own drink. Here's number two. I will say it has bourbon, 151, lemon juice, and falernum, cinnamon syrup, stuff like that. Will Smith's only starring role in 2012 was that Bad Boy's or some other franchise. Question number two, Will Smith's only starring role in 2012, Bad Boys, or some other franchise?
Round three. Everything new is old again. Question number three. Once again, it's a 50-50 round. You've, you've caught on already to what's going on. Question number three. Who hosted the Summer Olympics in 1964? Is that Tokyo or some other city? Number three. Who hosted the Summer Olympics in 1964? Tokyo or some other city? Round three, 50-50, everybody's favorite round. Number four. Question number four, how many electoral votes did George W. Bush get in 2000? 306 or some other number. Number four, how many electoral votes did George W. Bush get in 2000? Was that 306 or just any other number in the universe? Indeed, we are so lazy with this free game that we give you. It's insane how lazy we are. We just sit around all week. We're just drunk like 90% of the time. And then 10% of the time, we're like, oh, we should do a quiz on Monday night. (laughs) Question number five. Round three, question five. England's queen in 1705. Was she called Elizabeth or some other name? Number five. England's queen in 1705. Was she called Elizabeth or some other name? Of course, everything's rigged. This is like a carnival. Come on. Everything's rigged. Just leaning on the guy wire or the quiz. That's why the bonus prizes are rigged. Not true. Not leaning on that guy wire. Who's number six? Perry Mason's profession in the 60s TV series. Was Perry Mason a private investigator or did he have some other job? Private investigator or some other job? Perry Mason in the 60s TV series. Pick one. I like that Eric, or I'm sorry, the Jewish Viking, is drunk already. I have not even yet begun to drunk. Um, I might have another one of these, might have a Sazerac. Who knows? Who knows what the rest of tonight will bring? But luckily, Eric only has to moderate you. I just have to read. I can do that in my sleep. Super drunk. Here's number seven. Who lost the first Super Bowl, Kansas City Chiefs or some other team? Question number seven, who lost the first Super Bowl? Is that the Kansas City Chiefs or, you know, just some other team? Hell yeah, Froboz Magic. Sazerac is the world's finest cocktail. It's the world's oldest cocktail. Or maybe at least the American. Anyway, it's great, and I'll probably have one. Jerfat agrees. Round three, question eight. It's a 50-50 round. Everything new is old again. And we're at question eight. What singer won the most Grammys in 2004? Was that Beyonce or just some other singer? Number eight, what singer won the most Grammys in 2004? Beyonce or mm, some other singer? We have a lot of chat commands you can use, you know, exclamation point, rules, score sheet, zoom, support, BLM. And if you put my name in, you get a bad joke because that's all I want y'all to know about me. Bad jokes. So that is round number three. 
It is a 50-50 round. You figured it out, and now we get to move on to the bonus question. The bonus question is sponsored by Geeks Who Drink Zoom, Geeks Who Drink Zoom Quizzes. Quizzes on Zoom with Geeks Who Drink. Pretty fun. Here we go. Speaking of 18th century first names, because we so were, way back in 1790, the Chief Justice of the United States had what pretty common one? Going to move right along to the answers for this round, round number three. 50-50, you love it. Number one, what nation had the highest population in 1939? That was some other country. It was India. It was India, you guys. So some other country at number one. Number two, Will Smith's only starring role in 2012 was that Bad Boys or something else that was some other franchise. It was Men in Black. Number three, who hosted the Summer Olympics in 1964 was that Tokyo or some other city. That was Tokyo. It was Tokyo, you guys. Here's number four. Number four. How many electoral votes did George W. Bush get in 2000? 306 or some other number? An infinite number of choices. Oh, some other number. That was 271. 271. So some other number was the answer at number four. Number five. England's queen in 1705, was she called Elizabeth? No, it was some other name, and that other name was Anne. Anne. And yes, I realize the great Gabo, infinite below like 535, but I'm, that's not accounting for wrong answers. You know, you don't have to follow everybody's rules when you answer. You can say one billion and just be wrong flamboyantly. Number six, Perry Mason's profession in the 60s TV series... Private investigator? No. Some other job. Obviously a lawyer. Come on. Perry Mason was a lawyer. Number seven. Who lost the first Super Bowl? The Kansas City Chiefs or some other team? No, that was that was definitely the Chiefs. It was totally the Chiefs, you guys. They made it all the way to Super Bowl one and then did not win. Couldn't beat a drunk Packers team. Like, literally drunk Packers team. Number eight. The singer that won the most Grammys in 2004... That was Beyonce, because she won five Grammys in 2004. That's a lot of Grammys. Beyonce at number eight. Now we get to take a look at the answer for the bonus question, going back to the round three bonus question, sponsored by Geeks Who Drink Quizzes on Zoom. It is the way of the new world. It is the pandemic way to quiz. Here we go. Yes. Speaking of 18th century first names, way back in 1790, the Chief Justice of the United States had the pretty common first name, John. John was the answer for the bonus question. Going on to round number four. Round four. Yeah, the, the rest of these rounds aren't going to be as good as that 50-50 round. Obviously, we've reached the peak. We've reached the pinnacle of the night, the 50-50 round, all of that exhilaration and excitement. It's going to be one long crash for y'all. But round number four is called Wheels. The reason, luckily. Why is it called that? I don't know. We'll give you premiere dates and voiceover introductions. You name each TV show. We're just giving, giving you the premiere dates and the voiceover introductions of each TV show. You name the TV show. Oh yeah, we run these through Google Translate a few times, so sorry about that. But you'll do fine. Just name each TV show. It's going to be super fun. There's number one. Number one, my name is 2001. My name is Sid Bristov. Seven years ago, I was assigned to work secretly with the CIA SD6. I drew a secret, but I could not defend this case. Number one, 2001, my name is Sid Bristov. Seven years ago, I was assigned to work secretly with the CIA SD6. I drew a secret, but I could not defend this case. Google translated voiceover intros from TV shows. You get a year, you get the intro, you just name the TV show. Here's number two. Number two, 1974. He is an astronaut, a living man. We can recreate it. We have the technology. We could do better than that. Okay, tough, fast. Number two, 
1974. He is an astronaut, a living man. We can recreate it. We have the technology. We can do better than that. Okay, tough, fast. Round four, here's number three. You're just naming TV shows, and I have faith in you. You'll do really well. Number three, 1983. I am Adam, Prince Attorney, a great keeper of the Grey House. The hidden power of the story was revealed to me the day I raised my magic sword and said, I have the power of a purple skull. Number three, 1983. I am Adam, Prince Attorney. A great keeper of the Grey House. The hidden power of the story was revealed to me the day I raised my magic sword and said, I have the power of a purple skull. Round four, Wheels, The Reason, luckily, Google translated voiceover intros. You name some TV shows. And we'll all be friends at the end of this. Number four, question number four, 1989. Beckett himself quickly jumped into a breakthrough and ran away. He woke up in front of an unchecked glass mirror in the last trap under the control of an unknown force. Improve the situation. Number four, 1989. Beckett himself quickly jumped into a breakthrough and ran away. He woke up in front of an unchecked glass mirror in the last trap under the control of an unknown force. Improve the situation. If you just run things through various languages in Google Translate and then bring it back to the language you speak, yeah, you get stuff like this. Here we go with question number five. Number five, 2014. My name is Barry Allen. I live in the neighborhood as fast as I can. It is impossible for me to kill my mother at a young age. My father died and I was imprisoned. Then the accident didn't work for me. Number five, 2014. My name is Barry Allen. I live in the neighborhood as fast as I can. It is impossible for me to kill my mother at a young age. My father died and I was imprisoned. Then the accident, it didn't work for me. Round four, all of these are voiceovers from TV shows, just been overly Google translated into gibberish, and now you get to name the TV shows. Number six, question number six, 2005. Then I will do all the bad things I have done and all the wrong things I have done. I just want to be a good person. My name is Count. Number six, 2005. Then I will do all the bad things I have done and all the wrong things I have done. I just want to be a good person. My name is is count. <clears throat> it's true. I don't need any more microphones. I've still got seven sitting over there that I haven't even had the time to refurbish. So, you know, sometimes your hobbies get in the way of actual work. Round four, question number seven. Number seven, 2011. It is a city in Maine. The story of every known character is between two worlds. Only one person knows the truth, and only one person can stop the occult. Number seven. 
2011. It is a city in Maine. The story of every known character is between two worlds. Only one person knows the truth, and only one person can stop the occult. Round four, question number eight. Number eight, 1992, this is the true story of seven foreigners who were chosen to live in the same house, work together, and enter into life. Find out what happens when people stop joining in and begin to understand reality. Number eight, 1992, this is the true story of seven foreigners who were chosen to live in the same house, work together, and enter into life. Find out what happens when people stop joining in and begin to understand reality. Round four, you get an MHTV show with these Google translated voiceover intros. And since time moves in a linear fashion, I hope you were paying attention because we're done with the round. But we still have the bonus question sponsored by Geeks Who Drink Zoom Quizzes. Geeks Who Drink Zoom Quizzes, like a quiz, but on Zoom. Here we go. 1952, hurry up. Stronger than a locomotive. You can jump into tall buildings at once. China, in paradise. It's a bird. This is a plane. All these TV shows with these screwed up voiceover intros. Round four, question number one. 2001, my name is Sid Bristov. Seven years ago, I was assigned secretly with the CIA SD6. That, of course, is alias. Sidney Bristow, an alias, number one. It was one of my ex-wife's favorite shows. As such, I've seen too much of it. Number two, 1974, he is an astronaut, a living man. We can recreate it. We have the technology. We can do better than that. And of course, it's the $6 million man. $6 million man at number two. Number three. 1983. I am Adam, Prince Attorney, the great keeper of the Grey House. The hidden power of the story was revealed to me the day I raised my magic sword and said, I have the power of a purple skull. That is He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. If you just put He-Man, I'm sure you're... Imaginary Quizmaster gave you imaginary credit. He-Man and the Masters of the Universe at number three. Number four, 1989, Beckett himself quickly jumped into a breakthrough and ran away. He woke up in front of an unchecked glass mirror in the last trap under the control of an unknown force. That is Quantum Leap. Quantum Leap at number four. All of these intros make it sound like I'm having a stroke. If I had a stroke right now, nobody would help me. They would just be like, ah, that asshole is just reading a question. Number five, 2014. My name is Barry Allen. I live in the neighborhood as fast as I can. It is impossible for me to kill my mother at a young age. Good for him. That's The Flash. The Flash at number five. Flash at number five. Still too soon to make a George Reeves joke? I don't know. Try it. See what happens. Number six, 2005. Then I will do all the bad things I have done and all the wrong things I have done. Just want to be a good person. My name is Earl. My name is Earl at number six. Number seven. 2011, it is a city in Maine. The story of every known character is between two worlds. It's not Twin Peaks. It's Once Upon a Time. Once Upon a Time at number seven. Might have been the only one you struggled with? I don't know. I don't know your life. I'm not your real dad. Number eight, 1992. This is the true story of seven foreigners who were chosen to live in the same house, work together, and enter into life. That, of course, is the real world. The real world at number eight. Now, you're going to take a look at the answer for the bonus question for round number four. Bonus question for round number four, sponsored by Geeks Who Drink Zoom Quizzes. What's going on here? Yes, the real world suite in Vegas. Everybody remembers. Very sigh. 
1952, hurry up. Stronger than a locomotive. You can jump into tall buildings at once. China in paradise. It's a bird. This is a plane. Mambo, dog patch, banana face. It's the adventures of Superman. We just needed Superman. Now we get to move on to round number five. Round five is the visual round. Um, so, hey, if you have me muted, I understand. I know what I sound like. I used to be married, heard it all the time. But for this round, if you haven't, make sure to unmute the Twitch, you know, just, just for the hell of it. You know, while you're down there, turn the Twitch volume up. That's cool, right? You know, you're going to be naming movies. Sometimes hearing the clip jogs your memory just as well as seeing the clip. I say that just to make myself feel better about telling you to unmute. Anyway, now that you know you're going to be naming movies, let's find out more about the round together. You know what? We're just like you. Damn tired of Ray Liotta. So we promise this round has not one iota of Ray Liotta. Name each movie that was too good for Ray Liotta. You got years to help you be specific. You're going to do really well. It's number one. Good luck. You fired Reed without consulting us. You don't make decisions for the band. Hey. Well, I'm terribly sorry, dear. It's done. Besides, Miami will manage us. <laughs> Won't you, darling? Uh, I think about it. No. No. Ah? Huh? I said no. Oh, so it wasn't you who drilled a little hole in one of Big Fat Jeffrey's Big Fat Thumbnails, no? Of course not. Huh? I said, of course not. You drilled a hole in the dentist? Finish. No, I didn't. I thought it was kind of funny myself, but... Not surprised. No, That's not surprised. Nope. You're surprised? No. But Hubie uses big words, and they come out so natural. Oh, oh, for him. It pisses me off. Well, because of the dumb thing. My brother-in-law once said that I had no ambition. And then he bit me. Grinning at you, ghost. What the crap? If you build it, he will come. Uh, thank you. Uh. <clears throat> God damn it. Wait a minute. I've known Constantine for years. If he has never, ever said thank you. May that you're devilishly handsome, but with a churning inner turmoil that's always ready to blow. I what? enjoy what I do. <laughs> is that a crime? Not yet it isn't, but is this what it's come to for you, Mr. Leota? Exploiting tiny helpless bees so you don't have to rehearse your part and learn your lines, sir. Watch it, Benson. Right after I got here, I ordered some spaghetti with marinara sauce, and I got egg noodles and ketchup. <sighs> oh, you know what? Screw it. Screw it! I'm an average nobody. Get to live the rest of my life like a schnook. Pizza stay. You're not doing that good. Oh, just a moment. Oh, here it is. You don't make decisions for the band. Hey. Well, I'm terribly sorry, dear. It's done. Besides, thumbnails, no? Of course not. Huh? I said, of course not. You drilled a hole in the dentist? Finish? No, I didn't. I thought it was kind of funny myself, but. For him. It pisses me off. Well, because of the dumb thing. My brother-in-law once said that I had no ambition. And then he bit me. If you build it, he will come. Wait a minute. I've known Constantine for years. If he has never, ever said thank you. 
Not yet it isn't, but is this what it's come to for you, Mr. Leota? Exploiting tiny, helpless bees so you don't have to rehearse your part and learn your lines, sir? I'm an average nobody. I get to live the rest of my life like a schnook. Let's take a look at answers for round number five, and you can find out what all these movies were. Number one, 2019 Best Picture winner, Parasite. Number two, also a Best Picture winner, the Bohemian Rhapsody. Number three, Tell Ray Liotta is not in it because it's a Best Picture winner. Three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Number four. Um, not a Best Picture winner. Uh, that is Hubie Halloween. It lost to Shape of Water. Bummer. Number five. Shape of Water seems like the kind of movie where somebody was like, Field of Dreams is this one, by the way, but Shape of Water seems like the kind of movie where somebody was like, I'm tired of people telling me there's too many fish in the sea. Let's make a movie about what happens if you actually fuck one of those fish in the sea. Muppets Most Wanted at number six. Seven. Two thousand and seven, it's B movie, obviously, because it's Jerry Seinfeld is a B. The hell else would it be? Number eight. Too much Ray Liotta. You can't swing a dead cat without hitting Ray Liotta and Goodfellas. There you go. That is round number five. But yeah, B movie, also a Best Picture winner, like Kids' Choice Awards, right? Here we go with round number six. Round six tonight is called Double Up After Dark Edition. So it's a double up round, and it's the After Dark Edition. Now, when I was a kid, after Dark was like Cinemax After Dark. So I don't know if this is an X-rated round or not. I should probably read these before I present them. Each question has two correct answers. You give me one answer for one point or both answers for two points. It's a very simple idea. You've got two correct answers per question. You can give me one for one point, both for two points. If you try it two and only get one right, you can still get a point. Pretty great. It's question one. Number one. In the English version of Silent Night, what are the first two words that get rhymed with night? Number one. In the English version of Silent Night, what are the first two words that get rhymed with night? Remember, this is a 16-point possible round because you get one point for one correct answer, two points for two correct answers. If you put down three and two of them are correct, guess what? We don't do that bullshit penalizing thing like we used to. We're kinder, gentler, more benevolent. Don't let that get out. Here's number two. Question number two. Speaking of rhymes, the current Saturday Night Live cast includes what two rhyming dudes named Michael? Number two, round six, speaking of rhymes, the current Saturday Night Live cast includes what two rhyming dudes named Michael? Round six, it's a double up round. It's the After Dark Edition. I haven't seen any like porn references, so I guess it's not like Cinemax After Dark from the 80s. So I guess we're in the clear. It's tame. And here's number three. Number three, which two films directed by M. Night Shyamalan have a tomato meter over 75%, meaning people actually liked them? Number three, which two films directed by M. Night Shyamalan have a tomato meter rating over 75%? Round 
round six, question number four. Why? Because time moves in a linear fashion. Actually, it's just our perception of time that is linear, right? I, I, that's all I understand. Number four, what are the first two things that get a good night in Good Night Moon? Hate that book. Number four, what are the first two things that get a good night in Good Night Moon? like 791 people watching hopefully all 791 people are playing with some score sheet or a quiz master. i know there's quiz masters out there that will keep score for you if you need that number five in round number six in what country was van gogh's the starry night painted and in what country does it currently hang number five in what country was van gogh's the starry night painted and in what country does it currently hang? See, like other Eric down in Albuquerque, who's a, a fine quiz master and an even finer person. He has come out to, un, you know, like unrelated to quiz. He actually came to watch me do very bad stand-up comedy in Albuquerque. So, Eric, you're all right. But other Eric, like in the chat, he's fine. He'll score your score sheet for you if you want him to. I know Jerry Oki has said the same thing. So you can still play. You can still get that feel for an actual pub quiz. But we're in round number six, and we're going to take a look at question number six. Number six, what Rock Hall of Famers shared songwriting credit on 1978's Because the Night? Number six, what Rock Hall of Famers shared songwriting credit on 1978's Because the Night? Ouch, the Jewish Viking with his, that's not because he's a comic from Albuquerque. Albuquerque has some very good stand-up comics. And I'm not even using the very good sarcastically. They, they, they do all right. They do fine. I know some people I like. But, yeah, comedy was never more than an avocation for me. I had just cracked the regular rotation at my home club before the pandemic shut everything down. And I kind of never been more excited to not do anything. I'm like, oh man, this means I've got to actually do comedy regularly. Nope. COVID cleared that all up. <laughs> Round number six, question number seven. Germany's Walpurgis Night holiday spans what two months? Number seven, Germany's Walpurgis Night holiday spans what two months? Oh, shit, people are actually calling me out for a name of an Albuquerque comic I don't hate. Rusty. I like Rusty. Rusty's a nice guy. He does decent comedy. He's a go-getter. He puts on shows. Rusty is a nice guy. Okay? There you go. There's a name. I gave up a name. Gave up a name. <laughs> if I named one, I would make the other one. Damn it, you caught me. <laughs> Dang it. We, got a, we have a quiz master also who does comedy down there. She's pretty good at it. She was actually at the same show that I was at. She's pretty funny. Number eight, located just 30 miles apart, which two NHL teams are the closest to the Vegas Golden Knights? Number eight, located just 30 miles apart, these two teams. These two teams are the closest to the Las Vegas Golden Knights. Name them.
Yes, Walpurgis Night is uh, the unholy marriage of a walrus and a pug. That I mean, what better reason to celebrate is there than the unholy marriage of a walrus and a pug? All right, that's round number six, double up after Dark Edition. Apparently no porn in this one, but we do have a bonus question, so get your exclamation point typing fingers ready because this bonus question is sponsored, shockingly, by Geeks Who Drink Zoom Quizzes. There's that bonus. Including the legendary Flying Toasters. After Dark was a CD compilation of what outdated computer software. Round number six. Answers. Double up. In the English version of Silent Night, this is number one, by the way. You can tell by the one on the left-hand side of the screen. What are the first two words that get rhymed with night? It is bright and sight. Both rhyme with night, and those are the first two words of the song that get rhymed with the word night. Number two. Speaking of rhymes, the current Saturday Night Live cast includes what two rhyming dudes named Michael? That is Michael Shea and Mikey Day. Michael Shea and Mikey Day at question number two. Number three. Which two films directed by M. Night Shyamalan have a tomato meter rating over 75%? Split. People liked that one. And The Sixth Sense. So Split and The Sixth Sense. Signs not among them. Um, whatever other ones he's done. I know he's done more. Just can't think of them off the top of my head. Split in the sixth sense at number three. Number four. What are the first two things that get a good night and good night moon? I really hate that book. But the moon, of course. Good night moon and good night room. You have to say good night to the moon and you have to say good night to the room. And then later, it's mittens and kittens and that creepy old ghost lady sitting in the chair who haunts your dreams, who won't stop staring at you. It's like somebody perform an exorcism and get that old bitch out of the chair because I can't sleep with her in the room. I don't understand why she's still there. What unfinished business her damn ghost has in my room, in that chair. But there she is, always staring at me with her cold, dead, empty eye sockets. Anyway, question number five. Number five, in what country was Van Gogh's The Starry Night painted? And in what country does it currently hang? It was painted in France, and it hangs in the United States. It's at MoMA in the U.S. France and the United States at number five. And yeah, we already had the stroke. You're right. Number six, what Rock Hall of Famer shared songwriting credit on 1978's Because the Night? That would be Bruce Springsteen and obviously Patti Smith. Bruce Springsteen and Patti Smith at number six. Good night, mush. You're right. I forgot about the mush. Like, you have to say good night. Why did you not eat the mush? It's not going to be good in the morning. Anyway, round six answers. Question number seven. Germany's Walpurgis Night holiday spans April. It's at the end of April. And it continues into May. It's like just one night. One night. Oh, my God. You're right. She doesn't stay in the chair. She moves around the room while you're sleeping. That is the worst. Thanks for giving me nightmares, lazy daisy 37. Number eight, located just 30 miles apart, the two NHL teams that are the closest to the Las Vegas Golden Knights, the Anaheim Ducks, and Los Angeles Kings. The Anaheim Ducks and the Los Angeles Kings at number eight. Now we're going to take a look at the answer for the bonus question, sponsored by Geeks Who Drink Zoom Quizzes. Let's see. Including the legendary Flying Toasters, After Dark was a CD compilation of screensavers. The software is screensaver, but you know, the final round. The final round is where anything can happen. It's a random knowledge round worth 16 points. And by the way, if you saved your imaginary Joker, goddamn, you're a genius. Would you save the Joker if you crush the music round? Well, not everybody can crush the music round anyway. This final round is random knowledge, and it is a 16-point round. Some of these questions will have multiple parts, be worth multiple points. So, yes, 
it behooves you to pay close attention. However, I will tell you how much each question is worth. And the best part about this format, it's on the screen. So that's three different ways to figure out how much each question is worth. So let's jump in. Final round, question number one. Coincidentally, worth one point. Number one, two musicians named Bang Alter and Homem Christo recently hung up their helmets after 24 years performing under what name? Question number one, one point. Two musicians named Bang Alter and Homem Christo recently hung up their helmets after 24 years performing under what name? Dr. Sparkle 713, you can officially request it, but, you know, I'm not going to do it. Uh, though the final countdown, by the way, is the song that my mom once played at her funeral. She's like, hey, when I die, play the final countdown at my funeral. She loves that song, so what the hell? Number two, question number two is two points. Uh, two points to number two, poke bowl, poke bowls get their name from a word for sliced in what language? And ask Halle Berry, Pokeballs, Pokey, Pokeball, what the hell? Pokeballs are translated from the Japanese for what ball? Number two, two points. Pokeballs get their names, get their name from word for sliced in what language? And ask Halle Berry, Pokeballs are translated from the Japanese for what ball? Is that the Bay City Rollers I hear? I don't know what the person Thunderfunk has against the Bay City Rollers. I kind of like them. I think they're all right. I mean, not exactly something that's going to make the car playlist all the time, but, uh, you know, person Thunderfunk has a chance to defend themselves, I guess. They might not care. They might not care. Okay, round, final round. It's a final round. A final round. It's question number three, one point. Ted Cruz has a dog with what delicate name that awesomely anagrams to Snake Wolf. Number three, Ted Cruz has a dog with what delicate name that awesomely anagrams to Snake Wolf. I guess if it's a uh, Love Actually reference, then okay. I don't I, I don't want to do any Love Actually references, so cool. Not going to play Bay City Rollers at my mom's funeral. Number four. Question number four. This is a three-point question. Two are in the Americas, and one is a tiny Oceania island outside of Europe and Africa. What three nations list French as an official language? Number four. Three points. Two in the Americas, one tiny Oceania island. Outside of Europe and Africa, what three nations list French as an official language? So if you know all the places that list French as an official language, you're you're good for this question. If not, you're going to have to think about it a little bit. But it is a three-point question at number four, which means that question number five is worth one point. One big point at number five. The mountain pose begins and ends the 12-step yoga salute to what celestial body? Number five. The mountain pose begins and ends the 12-step yoga salute to what celestial body?
Hashtag free snake wolf. Free snake wolves, you guys. Free snake wolf to a good home. A uh, whole litter of snake wolves. So if you, uh, you have some love in your heart, room for love in your heart, free snake wolves at your local Albertsons. Go and get a free snake wolf. Here's question number six. Three points. Fill in the blanks of these team relocations. You love the sports ball questions. New York Nets, Blank Nets, Brooklyn Nets, Chicago Cardinals, Blank Cardinals, Phoenix and or Arizona Cardinals, and Oakland Raiders, Blank Raiders, Oakland Raiders. Number six, three points. You simply fill in the blanks of these team relocation sagas. New York Nets, Blank Nets, Brooklyn Nets, Chicago Cardinals, Blank Cardinals, Phoenix and or Arizona Cardinals, Oakland Raiders, Blank Raiders, Oakland Raiders. y'all we are in the final round it is a random knowledge round you got 16 maybe not imaginary points riding on this round so i certainly hope that you joker wisely uh, tonight we're at question number seven number seven right before they switched to the euro gene sibelius scowled from the 100 mark a bill of what nordic country number seven right before they switched to the euro Gene Sibelius scowled from the 100 mark a bill of what Nordic country? Number seven, you know, I thought it might be pronounced Jean, but it's not because it's not French. See, my inclination was to be Jean Sibelieu, but it's not. It's actually not. I looked it up. So unless the 12 sources I looked up are wrong, it's not Jean. I wish it were, though. Kind of didn't want to say Jean. Anyway, question number eight. Number eight. Four points. Is it a book about the 2008 financial crisis or a Pantera album? Hmm? You just put crisis or Pantera. Vulgar display of power. All the devils are here. After the music stopped. And cowboys from hell. Number eight, four points. Is it a book about the 2008 financial crisis or a Pantera album? Just put crisis or Pantera Vulgar display of power. All the devils are here after the music stopped and cowboys from hell. You know what? I love learning new things. So, Julia Figs BC, or is it Julia Fig SBC? Since you say you're a classical music director and you are sure that it's pronounced Jean, I'm going to take your word for it because, I, like I said, I looked up a bunch of stuff, but that crap could be wrong too. So, I'm just going to take your word for it. I mean, it seems like it's your job. I believe you. I've got a lot of things that are my job too, and I try to tell people, and they're like, what do you know? Well, I'm like, if a classical music director tells me I'm pronouncing a musician's name wrong, eh, probably going to take that advice. Of course, you could be fucking with me. Either way, I'm okay. 
Here we go with the bonus question for the final round. The bonus question in the final round sponsored by Geeks Who Drink Zoom Quizzes. Zoom Quizzes with Geeks Who Drink on Zoom. It's a really wonderful thing. Now, here we go. Bonus. Paul Fleming and Philip something are co-founders of what chain Asian eatery? Bonus, Paul Fleming and Philip Something are co-founders of what chain Asian eatery? Final round answers, 16 points, random knowledge, everything that's great about quiz in this one round. Question number one, one point. Two musicians named Bang Alta und Homem Christo recently hung up their helmets after 24 years performing as Daft Punk. Daft Punk at number... I was shocked that they'd been performing as Daft Punk for 24 years. But I guess I'm just not paying attention to EDM. Are they EDM? That's how much I'm not paying attention. Daft Punk at number one. Number two. Two points. Poke Bowls get their name from a word for sliced in Hawaiian. And Poke Balls are translated from the Japanese for Monster Ball. Hawaiian and Monster at number two. Number three, Ted Cruz has a dog with what delicate name that awesomely anagrams to Snake Wolf, which I'm pretty sure is a Metal Gear Solid character. But that's Snowflake. Ted Cruz's dog is named Snowflake. So I assume Ted Cruz thinks his dog is a liberal and wants socialized medicine. The hell, Ted Cruz. Number four, three points outside of Europe and Africa. The three nations that list French as an official language... Canada, duh. Haiti, duh. And Vanuatu. Canada, Haiti. Vanuatu at number four. Number five. The mountain pose begins and ends the 12 step yoga salute to the sun. Hello, sun. And the sun's like, hey, I'd like to see you do some yoga today. And it's like, all right, cool, sun. Do the mountain pose and begin and end. Sun, number five. Number six. Three points. You had to fill in the team relocation blanks. New York Nets, New Jersey Nets, Brooklyn Nets, Chicago Cardinals, St. Louis Cardinals, greatest show on turf, and then now they're the Arizona Cardinals by way of Phoenix. Oakland Raiders, Los Angeles Raiders, and back to Oakland. And, of course, now they're in Las Vegas. So, I guess, good. Have you ever been to Oakland? Anybody in the chat, do you live in Oakland before I absolutely offend you? Oakland, outside of Chinatown, is probably, quite literally, the least attractive city I've ever been in. And I'm not talking about people. I'm just talking about the city. Like, it's uninspiring. But the Chinatown part of Oakland, God, I loved it. Anyway, final round, question number seven. Right before they switch to the Euro, is it now, here's the thing. Is it Sibiliu or is it Sibilius? I'm going to say Jean. Jean, whatever the fuck, scowled from the 100 mark a bill of Finland. Finland at number seven. And at number eight. Four points. Crisis or Pantera, vulgar display of power. That is a Pantera album. All the Devils Are Here. It's a crisis book. After the music stopped. Crisis book and Cowboys from Hell, obviously a Pantera album. So you got Pantera, Crisis, Crisis, Pantera at number eight. Sibelius. So Jean Sibelius. I'm going to get this right. If this never comes up in my life, it doesn't matter. I'm going to be prepared with Jean Sibelius. Jean Sibas. You try the Sibas. Sibas is on a special tonight. All right, cool. So. Now we go to the final round bonus question of the evening. It's your last opportunity for somebody to win tickets to a future Zoom quiz. Question. Paul Fleming and Philip Something are co-founders of what chain Asian eatery? Obviously, P.F. Chang's. See, for a long time, I thought P.F. Chang's meant pretty fucking Chang's. And I didn't know if it was like a really attractive person named Chang or it was just like so Chang, it was pretty fucking Chang. Like, not super fucking Chang, but pretty fucking Chang. You know, it's like, yeah, it's Chang, but it's too, like, an, not to the nth degree. It's pretty fucking Chang. And to find out it's Paul Fleming and Philip Chang, that's, like, a little underwhelming. Like, I'm a little disappointed by that. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Uh, be, be good. <laughs> Whatever that means to you, just be good. And we really hope that we get to see you back again 
another time. We'll see you.